Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Reaper Minis TV. We're going to jump right into some reviews of new Reaper releases. First thing we'll do is look at three different chronoscope miniatures. First one is Murloc the Magnificent, and this is a single piece model, and as you've probably guessed, he's a magician. He's wearing a tuxedo, he has a top hat in his left hand, there's a little bunny rabbit coming out of it. In his right hand he holds a magic wand, which was bent in the package. It's a little bit thin, but I was able to get it bent back straight without damaging it at all. There was a visible mold line going around pretty much the entire figure. It was a little more thick than I've seen on some other recent miniatures from Reaper, but I was able to clean it up without damaging the figure at all. It just took a little longer than normal. So my dilemma with Murloc is what to use him for. Now, if you have a need for a magician in, say, a zombie holocaust game or something like that, where he's just running around, then he'd be perfect. But I think he would be more suited to being a supervillain some kind of magic-using supervillain in a variety of games, whether it's Champions, Mutants, and Masterminds, or whatever, I think he's probably best suited for that. Next up is a figure that's named Jessica Blaze, and she's listed as being a smuggler of some kind. Uh, she's also a single-piece miniature. She carries a pistol in both of her hands on her belt. She has a couple other bits of gear. She's wearing a, looks like about a half shirt, where she's showing off her midriff, tight jeans, and some big boots. She's also wearing a jacket with some large shoulder pads, and her hair is cut in a very blunt style across the back. Uh, the first thing that I thought of when I saw the miniature was she would be perfect in resolution. Another game that I like to play, it's a sci-fi game, it's skirmish based, and she would be great as a CSO agent or something similar, so I think that's a great place for her. She should also work well as a player character in D20 Future, or maybe even a Star Wars game or something like that as a pretty normal player character. The last chronoscope miniature for this time around is Mira. She's a post-apocalyptic heroine, and with this one there is going to be a little bit of assembly. You get the main figure, and then a cape that goes around her waist, and it's really more an extension of the jacket that she's wearing, and it just connects at her waist. There's a holster on each of her hips, and there's lots of buckles and laces on her boots and the different straps and things like that all over the miniature. The other pieces that you get are her hands and weapons. You get six in total, three right and three left, and they're just opposite duplicates of each other. You get two curved bladed weapons, two automatic pistols, and two pistols that almost look like flintlock pistols, but if you painted them upright, you could probably turn them into laser pistols or something. Now, she would obviously do fine in any kind of post-apocalyptic game or road warrior kind of game. I could also see dropping her into resolution as a couple of different kinds of characters. Maybe use her in a future game like Traveler, D20 Future, something like that. Or you could even drop her into a superhero game as a normal with weapons or a weapon-carrying superhero or supervillain, something like that. The first Dark Heaven Legends figure we'll look at this time around is Taldalis. She's an elf huntress, and before you think about it or ask, yes, the long spear was bent in the package, and again, yes, I was able to get it back into shape. It did take a little bit longer than something like Murloc's Magic Wand, just because it's a little longer piece, but I was able to get it straight, and this is a single-piece miniature. It didn't require much cleaning at all. There were a couple little bits of flash here and there on the model. The mold line was very faint almost undetectable. It was mostly on the shaft of the spear. She's wearing heavy armor and also has a sword and a scabbard across her backside. I could see this model easily being used as a good player character model in pretty much any fantasy game, or you could drop her in as the champion of a unit of high elf spearmen in Warhammer Fantasy, or something like that. Okay, with this next model named Sherilith, she's a spider demoness, have a couple of warnings right up front. First, there is some nudity to the model, so viewer beware. There's some nudity coming up. And second is there are a lot of pieces in this model, so you're going to do some assembly if you want to put her together. There are 13 pieces that make up the entire model. Eight of them are legs, and you're going to have to carefully cut them off of the metal sprue that they were cast on. Each of the legs needed a little bit of cleaning because there was a visible mold line, but there wasn't very much flash and there were no defects to any of them. There are three pieces that go into making up the segmented body sections of her spider parts, and the smallest one is in the middle, and it attaches to 
part of her lower torso and then to the big bulbous spider part. The big piece is actually made of two hollow halves of sort of like an egg, and they all go together pretty easily. They also needed some cleaning, but on a model this size, that's not unexpected at all. The large egg-shaped piece connects to the middle piece via a small nub kind of joint. Now, you could just use regular super glue on this, but I would probably advise you to pin it or use some kind of super strong epoxy or something just to make sure that that joint doesn't fail on you. And then the smaller middle spider section connects to the back side of her lower torso with all eight legs fitting nicely into little sockets. Now her left hand has to be glued onto the rest of the body and when you do that it makes it look like she's casting a spell. Instead of clothing on her upper torso she's wearing quite a bit of jewelry but none of it really covers much. There's a large spider pendant hanging off of her neck and some web designs to the jewelry that's on her arms and on her torso. The upper part of her torso also needed some cleaning. There was a mold line running through the top of her head and also down one arm that I had to be pretty careful with because I could have marred the hairline itself. When you're assembling the model, you probably want to do a dry run of the positioning of the legs just to make sure you get them right so she's standing up straight. Now, this is an awesome model. I really like this model, not because I'm some kind of perv that needs to look at half-naked metal figures, but because in our D&D &D game, we're about to start the Q series from old school D&D. &D. We're playing it in 4th edition, and this is going to be an awesome addition to the Queen of the Demon Web Pits module. We're going to round things out for this episode looking at three new Warlord miniatures. The first is Herg the Bloody, and he's for what I'm presuming is a new faction from the Savage North expansion. I'm not sure which faction that's for yet, but as you can see, he's a barbarian, large, muscle-bound guy who's wearing a lot of furs, not a whole lot else in the way of armor. He has two axes, one in each hand. He has a dagger on his belt, along with a couple of skulls as trophies. On the back side of the model, there's a length of rope and some pouches, so he could be used as a good barbarian figure for a player character model if you're not playing Warlord. It's a single piece figure with most of the cleaning limited to a mold line that was visible on the underside of both arms and across the top of the axes, but really not too much else. He has a lot of hair and fur and skin visible, so with a limited palette you could probably paint him up to a pretty good standard. And I think he might also do pretty well as the champion of a unit of Chaos Marauders in a Warrior of Chaos Army for Warhammer Fantasy. Next up is an addition to the Bloodstone Gnomes faction for Warlord. Now, their full army list is going to be in the Savage North supplement, and this guy is a Beetle Rider. He's a captain for the Beetle Riders, and the first thing I thought of when I saw this model is that he would make an awesome replacement for the leader of a unit of Warhammer Fantasy goblins that are Spider Riders, and in the Warlord line for the Bloodstone Gnomes, there's actually two other models, so you could have some variety in a unit if you wanted to place them like that. They would just be a very unique unit to drop on the table to use as goblin spider riders. He comes in three pieces. Assembly was a snap. Cleanup was very limited to a couple of bits of flash and some faint mold lines. Now if you do decide to use him in Warhammer Fantasy Battles instead of Warlord and put him on a cavalry base, there will be a tiny bit of overhang where the beetle's legs are hanging over the sides of the top of the base a little bit but this is really a non-issue. It's still going to be a spectacular model for either game you use it in, or even if you just use it as a monster in some kind of Underdark adventure in D&D. &D. Very cool model here. The last model this time around is a Dark Elf Assassin. It's a two-piece model where you have the right arm and dagger as a separate piece, and this just glues into place under part of his cloak. You have a little bit of range of motion to where you could pose it a little bit differently, but not a whole lot. He wears a tattered cloak like the previous Dark Elf we looked at in another episode, and he's very thin and lanky. He looks bulked up because of his flowing robes and cloak, but if you look at his arms and legs and even his waist, you'll see that he's a really thin guy. Now, I'm obviously going to use him in my Warhammer Fantasy army as a Dark Elf Assassin. He will fit on a 20mm square base or the 25mm square base for Warlord. Or if you don't play either one of those games, you could use him as a player character model for D&D or another fantasy game. Even if you didn't need him to be a Dark Elf, he could be very passable as a regular Elf or even a human. Okay, thanks for watching this episode of Reaper Minis TV, and I'll see you next time.